The Coast Guards from the Philippines and the United States made an historic joint maritime patrol in the contested waters of West Philippine Sea. As one of China's monster ships reportedly intruded into Philippines' exclusive economic zone, U.S. Coast Guard Cutter Weish WMSL 751 and BRP Melchora Aquino MRRV 9702 held a bilateral search and rescue exercise in the South China Sea on July 17. These serve as a response and to closely monitor a China Coast Guard vessel that came close to Lubang Island over the past few days. The two Coast Guard Maritime Patrol also successfully concluded a joint passing exercise. The exercise focused on simulating various scenarios, including search and rescue, firefighting, communication exercises, and medical evacuation. Additional activities included personnel transfer and a joint sale. To further strengthen the bilateral maritime cooperability of the Philippine and United States, the Philippine Navy is also studying the possibility of conducting a rotation and reprovision mission to 2nd Thomas Shoal. As part of a multilateral maritime cooperative activity with allied countries in the South China Sea. In such scenario, a resupply mission could be part of a multilateral exercise involving several nations, in which vessels and aircraft from partnered countries such as the US, Japan, UK and Australia could conduct simultaneous patrols with Philippine forces in the South China Sea, while Manila is conducting a resupply mission. All options are being discussed on the planning table. Once finalized, this will be submitted for approval," said Rear Admiral Roy Vincent Trinidad, Navy spokesperson for the West Philippine Sea. The U.S. Embassy assured that they will coordinate with the country on a wide array of issues of shared concern as allies of the Philippines. The United States has expressed its commitment to help the Philippines in what it needs, particularly to ensure successful rotation and reprovision missions to Filipino troops on the grounded BRP Sierra Madre. Kanishka Gangopadye, spokesman for the U.S. Embassy in Manila, said that as allies, the United States and the Philippines coordinate on a wide array of issues of shared concern. This pronouncement came as the Philippine Navy said, it is eyeing to use of an American unmanned aircraft system to carry out resupply missions in 2nd Thomas Shoal and avoid getting harassed by Chinese maritime forces. In a press conference, Rear Admiral Roy Vincent Trinidad, Philippine Navy spokesman for the West Philippine Sea, confirmed that U.S. Marines tested their tactical resupply unmanned aircraft system during two recent military exercises earlier this year. The Philippines is considering all types of options, Trinidad said when asked if the Philippine Navy is eyeing to acquire the same U.S. drone system for the resupply mission in Ayungan Shoal. According to the U.S. Marine Corps, their 15th Marine Expeditionary Unit employed a tactical resupply unmanned aircraft system in Palawan during the Balakatan exercise in April and during the Archipelagic Coastal Defense Continuum in May. The tactical resupply unmanned aircraft system, according to the U.S. Marine Corps, is a Class III unmanned aerial system which can deliver critical supplies to remote and inaccessible areas with unprecedented speed and precision. On July 16, Coast Guard from the United States and Philippines successfully concluded a joint passing exercise near Lubang Island. The exercise involved the PCG's BRP Melchora Aquino and the USCG Cutter Weish. Sharing similar mandates, values, and objectives of protecting lives at sea, and maintaining a rules-based maritime order. This exercise highlights the closer and expanding relations between the Coast Guards of the two allied nations. The exercise aims to strengthen maritime cooperation and interoperability between the two Coast Guard services in the areas of maritime safety and environmental protection. The passing exercise focused on simulating various scenarios, including search and rescue, firefighting, communication exercises, and medical evacuation. By sharing best practices, concepts, doctrines, and standard operating procedures, the PCG and USCG enhance their respective capabilities to respond to maritime emergencies and contingencies. The joint exercise underscores the commitment of both Coast Guards to their vital role in safeguarding lives at sea, promoting maritime security, and protecting the marine environment. The PCG, alongside its partners and allies in the USCG, will continue to expand their collaboration and jointly strengthen their capabilities to effectively respond to maritime contingencies and promote a safe, secure and peaceful rules-based maritime order. Meanwhile, 
Armed Forces of the Philippines Chief General Romeo Bronner Jr. and U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff Chairman General Charles Brown, discussed the next Balakatan exercise and upcoming signing of the General Security of Military Information Agreement. The strong military ties between the Philippines and the United States got a further boost following the visit of U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff Chair General Charles Brown Jr. The Philippines and the United States are now gearing up for much larger bilateral war games next year. Armed forces of the Philippines said the early preparation for Balakatan is partly why U.S. General Charles Brown Jr., chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, visited the military headquarters on July 16. Brown met AFP Chief General Romeo Bronner Jr. and Defense Secretary Gilberto Teodoro Jr. The meeting underscored their commitment to the Philippine-United States' long-standing military alliance. Discussions focused on enhancing bilateral defense cooperation, strengthening joint military exercises, and addressing regional security challenges. The officials discussed future initiatives to bolster defense relations and foster greater interoperability. According to Bronner, our alliance with the United States remains a cornerstone of our national security. Through continued collaboration and mutual support, we fortify our defense capabilities and ensure the stability of our region. The AFP and U.S. armed forces also continue to engage in various joint activities, including training exercises, humanitarian assistance and disaster response operations, further solidifying their partnership and readiness to respond to contingencies. This week, the Philippine Coast Guard deployed two of its biggest vessels in the West Philippine Sea. The 97-meter Teresa Magbanua and BRP Melchora Aquino into the contested waters of West Philippine Sea. BRP Teresa Magbanua, the PCG's most modern vessels, has been stationed at Escoda since April in response to the presence of Chinese maritime militias and suspected Chinese reclamation activities in the area. While BRP Melchora Aquino, Philippine Coast Guard flagship vessels completed its two days maritime patrol, 20 to 25 nautical miles east of the Scarborough Shoal, around 120 nautical miles of the Philippine island of Luzon well within the 200 nautical miles exclusive economic zone of Manila. The deployment of the largest Coast Guard vessels of the Philippines and China at West Philippine Sea, underscores the heightening maritime conflict between the two countries. As the security environment in the region becomes increasingly severe, the signing of Japan's Reciprocal Access Agreement an important security-related agreement of allied countries with the Philippines, a strategic partner located at a strategic juncture on the sea lanes and sharing fundamental values and principles with allies, will further promote security and defense cooperation between the like-minded countries, and firmly support peace and stability in the Indo-Pacific region. This development, which comes as China continues to ramp up tensions in the South China Sea, will upgrade the bilateral relations between Manila and Tokyo. Since the deal fosters greater defense cooperation, by allowing the Japan Self-Defense Force to go to Manila and train with the Philippine Armed Forces. Formal negotiations for the RAA began in November 2023 after the visit of Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida to Manila. Several months later, the two countries held a virtual line-by-line -line reading of the pact's main text and records of discussion on June 11, according to the palace statement. Similarly, the deal adds to the growing list of like-minded partners teaming up to counter China's influence in the Indo-Pacific region. Aside from Japan's reciprocal access agreement, the Philippines had mutual defense treaty signed in 1951, evolve into visiting forces agreement in 1998 and enhanced defense cooperation agreement in 2014 with the United States, and status of visiting forces agreement signed in 2007 and took effect in 2012 with the Commonwealth of Australia. The RAA bears some similarity to the visiting forces agreement VFA, that the Philippines and the US signed in 1998. However, Manila has bitter memories from deals of this nature. The VFA was nearly dissolved under the administration of former President Rodrigo Duterte, after he threatened to end the pact over a bid to gain more leverage to China, but he ultimately reinstated it in June 2021. The Philippine Armed Forces Chief of Staff General Romeo Bronner told reporters on Thursday, that the RAA will allow the Philippines to conduct more than just humanitarian assistance and disaster relief operations, but actual military operations. Once the pact comes into force, the RAA with Manila will be Japan's third defense cooperation deal with other countries, including the United Kingdom. Tensions between China and the Philippines over the West Philippine Sea have reached a new peak, 
with China adopting an aggressive stance reminiscent of a boxer challenging an underdog in the ring. This metaphor aptly captures the dynamic where China's sheer size and military might overshadow the Philippines' more modest capabilities. Yet, in this high-stakes geopolitical contest, the Philippines refuses to engage in a direct confrontation akin to a boxing match, opting instead to strategize and maneuver like a chess player, adhering to international law and leveraging the 2016 arbitral ruling. China's approach in the West Philippine Sea can be likened to a seasoned boxer taunting a smaller, seemingly weaker opponent. With its formidable naval presence and island-building activities, China exerts pressure and displays dominance, aiming to solidify its claims over the disputed waters. The strategic location and rich resources of the West Philippine Sea make it a significant area of interest for Beijing, which views the region as integral to its territorial sovereignty and maritime ambitions. In contrast, the Philippines, aware of its limitations in terms of military strength, chooses not to accept China's boxing challenge head-on. Instead, Manila responds with the finesse and calculation of a chess player. This strategy is rooted in the framework of international law, particularly the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea UNCLOS, and reinforced by the 2016 Arbitral Tribunal ruling that invalidated China's expansive claims in the South China Sea affirming the Philippines' sovereign rights over its exclusive economic zone EEZ, in the region. The Philippines' reliance on international law serves as a crucial counterbalance to China's aggressive tactics. By emphasizing legal and diplomatic avenues, Manila seeks to garner international support and uphold the rule of law in maritime disputes. The 2016 arbitral ruling, which favored the Philippines, remains a cornerstone of its strategy reinforcing its legitimate claims and providing a legal basis for its actions in the West Philippine Sea. Moreover, the Philippines leverages its alliances and partnerships with other nations to bolster its position. By engaging with like-minded countries and international organizations, Manila aims to strengthen its diplomatic hand and deter unilateral actions by China. This approach underscores the Philippines' commitment to peaceful resolution and multilateralism, contrasting sharply with China's assertive posturing. In essence, the Philippines' strategy in the West Philippine Sea highlights a pragmatic and calculated response to a complex and asymmetrical challenge. By choosing the chessboard over the boxing ring, Manila demonstrates resilience and strategic acumen, focusing on long-term objectives rather than immediate confrontations. This approach not only aligns with international legal standards but also showcases the Philippines' determination to defend its national interests through peaceful and lawful means. As tensions persist, the world watches closely, recognizing that the outcome of this geopolitical chess match will have far-reaching implications for regional stability and the international maritime order. The Philippines' stance serves as a testament to the power of legal frameworks and diplomatic engagement in resolving disputes, offering a model for other nations facing similar challenges in the global arena. In conclusion, the West Philippine Sea is without a shadow of a doubt, this is a Philippine territory. The Chinese need to ditch their antiquated mindset, open their eyes wider, and acknowledge this truth. Until then, their futile attempts to stake a claim in these waters will continue to be met with a mocking chorus, that the West Philippine Sea, is for the Philippines, not for China.